2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Starting at the 16th verse. And it reads like this. From now on, therefore, we regard no one. Somebody say no one. According to the flesh. Even though we regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Pa Paul is making a distinction. He say that, that at one point we saw Jesus as this earthly king. We, we wanted him to be the Messiah that would take over and reign, and we regarded him according to the flesh. And what we've been doing is we've been judging people according to their earthly positions. We've been judging people according to their earthly, uh, according to their earthly roles, according to what we can see with our flesh. And he says, nope, no more. Now, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. We're, we're not just looking at the physical. Therefore, here it is, familiar passage. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. There are about 15 Christians that should have just shouted right there. You should have remembered who you were before Jesus saved you. You should have remembered the old, and you should have said, I'm new. I'm new. Matter of fact, there ought to be five of y'all that ought to shout out, I'm new. I, I, I don't know about you, but there are some things that I am grateful for that God has made new in my life. Verse 18 says, all this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. God, 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 watch this. He reconciles me to him. He, he restores the relationship. He brings me back. He, he, he makes my account balance zero. Then he says, you ought to go out and share this news with other people. He said he's given me the ministry of reconciliation. Pastor, what's my purpose? Reconciliation. Pastor, what's my ministry? Reconciliation. Pastor, what's my calling? Reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. That's, that's what he did on the cross. That's what he did when he died. Not counting their trespasses against them. He, he wasn't here to talk about how bad you were. He was here to make you understand how good our God was. Man. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Here it is. Therefore... We are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. This is, this is my message today. I'm, I'm imploring you on behalf of Christ. You need to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Uh, today, today, as we continue this series, Invasion, I, I, got, I got a message title for you. I want you to high-five three people and let them know we are the diplomats. We are the diplomats. We are the diplomats. We are the diplomats. I grew up in a Southern Baptist, traditional Baptist church, uh, first church before my dad began to pastor. We attended a church called New Hope Baptist Church in Long Beach, California, uh, and that church, uh, I was involved there. I've said the joke many times, but it's not a joke. Uh, I'm 38 years old. I'll be 39 in May. I've been in the church 38 years, nine months. I've been in church all my life. Uh, I remember going to church on Sunday morning. And then after going to church from Sunday school to Sunday morning, we would go to church then in the afternoon because our church was always fellowshipping with some other church. I didn't know what that meant. I just meant I had to go back to church. So we had 3 o'clock service. Then we had 5 o'clock BTU. Y'all don't know nothing about no Bible training union. That's, that's for the old saints right there. See, I'm, I'm on this brink of like, you know what I'm saying, like the old saints and then the, the people who don't go to church. I, I kind of flow between both words. It's BTU is Bible training union at 5 5 p.m. And then, and then uh, we had to do this thing also called Royal Ambassadors. It was for the young men in the church. They wanted us to be, uh, they wanted us to be more Christ-like. They wanted us to not be heathens when we grew up. So they had this program called Royal Ambassadors. And what they would do, they would take us through, and we had to do a Royal Ambassadors Pledge. To show you how much of a heathen I am, I do not know the Royal Ambassadors Pledge. 
I, I did not memorize it. I do not know it. I, I did look it up, though. And, and here's what the royal ambassador's pledge uh, says. As a royal ambassador, I will do my best to become a well-informed, responsible follower of Christ, to have a Christ-like concern for all people, to learn how to carry the message of Christ around the world, to work with others in sharing Christ, and to keep myself clean and healthy in mind and body. I failed. That, that was a royal ambassador's pledge, and I failed. I failed in so many ways because I didn't do most of that stuff growing up. I didn't do most of that stuff. And, and here's, here's the reality. When somebody told me that I should be a royal ambassador, I didn't even understand what the term ambassador was. I didn't even understand what an ambassador was, and they're telling me that I should be a royal ambassador. Now, in the context of our series, you understand that you are royalty. I pray, I pray that you remind yourself daily when you wake up, when you look in the mirror, when you are feeling uh, down, when you feel like you, you don't have an identity or self-esteem. In the context of this series, you understand that you are royalty. But think about the eight-year-old boy who's sitting in this class, and they're calling me a royal ambassador. I'm like, I'm not British. The only thing I knew about royalty was people overseas, and they had monarchs, and they had all this stuff. I, I didn't understand the concept. Royal was a foreign word for me, but then ambassador, that sounded like something. All I saw was the cuss word in the middle. <laughs> Y'all didn't think like I did when you were a kid. You guys were just angelic little people who, yeah, right. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't understand what they were trying to get me to do. And because of that, I didn't live it out. Because I didn't understand what they wanted from me, because I didn't understand what they were calling me to, when I didn't understand what they were trying to place in me, I never lived it out. And I think there is some truth to that as it relates to the Christian walk, as it relates to how we are called to live and walk and who we are. Paul, in this particular text, is giving us a summary of what Jesus has done. He said, Jesus has reconciled the world back to himself. However, there are kingdoms that have not come under his rule yet. There are kings who are still in rebellion. If you remember the message last week, if you are a king, you are either in relationship or rebellion to the greater king. Paul is saying there are still kingdoms that are not under the authority of the king of kings. And God has made a way for every king to have his restitution paid, to be reconciled to God. But there are several kingdoms who do not know this. He says, this is where you come in. He says, you, you are on an assignment to go and have this ministry of reconciliation. The problem with ministry is that we've used it as a church term. We've used it as a church term. And here's the problem with ministry as a church term. It's become a noun and not a verb. So here, here's the noun. The noun is, oh, I'm in charge of the women's ministry. And so what you do is instead of maintaining the territory in here to extend it into the world, you want to take over the kingdom of women's ministry. There are people who say, well, I, I, I'm, I'm over the ushers. Go back, fair enough, you might be over the ushers. You know what church you're from. I'm over the ushers. I'm over the ushers. I'm, I'm over, whatever it is, that's your territory and, and that's your ministry because it's a noun. It's the thing that you control. Versus the thing that you're called to do. That ministry is supposed to be a verb. It's supposed to be that action. It's supposed to be that thing that we've been given to do. God says, I've given you the ministry of reconciliation. And I thought about this. In, in, in American government, we have senators, congressmen, presidents, legislators. But in other countries, they have ministers of. In other nations, they have ministers of, ministers of defense, ministers of health, ministers of these different places. They have ministers of. And, and in the church, in the, in the United States and in the West, we have forgotten what ministry is. Ministry is action on behalf of someone else. And, and the problem is because we don't understand that ministry is to be action-oriented towards something that we're called to do, we've missed out on who we are and we've not fulfilled our purpose. 
We, we've not fulfilled our, our purpose. Our purpose is to have the ministry of reconciliation to remind these other kings that they are either in rebellion or relationship with the greater king. I don't have time to recap what that means. If you weren't here last week, please go and listen to the message. The truth of the matter is every single person who has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ now has an assignment. Now has an assignment. And that assignment is to be a minister of reconciliation. Paul gives us a specific title. I read all of that verse for context, and I only really want to lift up one word today for a few minutes, and we will be done. The word here is then found in verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors. We, we are ambassadors. We are diplomats. We, we represent the king in a foreign territory. I got to give you three things about being an ambassador, three things about being an ambassador that I believe will change the way that you think, and it should change the way that you live, so that you will not live your life not fulfilling your assignment because you did not understand your role. The first thing I want to give you is the role of the ambassador, the role of an ambassador. Paul calls us an ambassador, so that is clear. We are ambassadors. He says, therefore, because Jesus Christ died, because he has reconciled us to himself, we are ambassadors ambassadors. Check this out. I need you to get this. I need you to understand this. It's not a question of if you will apply to fulfill the role. I was looking online this week, and as I do, oftentimes I look at biblical terms and how they relate in the Western world in which we live, and every time I put up ambassador, it would say ambassador jobs available. Ambassador jobs available. And you have to apply for the ambassador job. Let me apply for this role. Let me apply for this. Here's the reality. Once you receive the goodness of God and you receive the forgiveness of Jesus, it is the requirement of everyone who has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ to be an ambassador. I'm not asking you if you want to apply. I'm telling you what you're called to. I'm not asking you what you want to do in the kingdom. I'm telling you what you're responsible for in the kingdom. I, I didn't come by here today to make suggestions. I came by here to talk to the people who are ready to accept the role. That, that, that we have jumped into something and we are called something in the scripture that many times we overlook. And here it is, the role of, uh, that Paul has given us in this text. He says, we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors for Christ. Now, I like to watch football uh, during football season and on ESPN there's a there's a segment of one of the shows that comes on regularly uh, in, in the, uh, on the NFL uh, section. And they, they look at the guys who made mistakes during that football day. And they have this segment called, you had one job. <laughs> you, you had one job. And, and oftentimes, the you had one job section will be uh, uh, somebody who is supposed to block for the quarterback. And, and he, he finds himself looking off into the air and not doing what it is. And the quarterback gets pummeled because he didn't do what he was supposed to do. And they will look at that clip and they will say, come on, man, you have one job. You know what I'm talking about? He knows what I'm talking about. He's seeing that section right there. See, even a child will lead them. He understands and knows that section. Here it is. Here it is. There'll be, there'll be a section where, where, where there's a guy, he's wide open. He gets all the way into the end zone. Pass is perfectly thrown. Quarterback throws it. He looks up and can't catch the ball. And, and this would have been a game-winning touchdown. And they'll look at him and say, seriously, man, you had one job. And the thing about the one job section of this particular show is the one job section is not necessarily making fun of things that happen in the technicalities of the game. It's not making fun of the people who missed out on some stuff that were nuanced, and this was the difficult stuff, the stuff that only the proficient people can get done. No, the thing about this section is this is the easy stuff. This is the stuff that should have been done. This is the stuff that, that at the base and the core of what you do, if you don't do this, you have missed your one role. And can I talk to the believers in the room today? I believe that Satan is, in, is looking at us and watching game film on our lives, and he's laughing at us. The angels in heaven are more frustrated watching the same film when we miss our opportunities to be rep representatives of the kingdom of God and to reconcile people to this good news. And they're saying, you had one job. You, you had one job. You think it's complicated to figure out what it is that God has called you to do? Nope, it's not that complicated. You think it's hard to discover the plan and the purpose that God has for your life? Nope, it's not that hard. Just like that segment on ESPN, you have one job. It is to glorify God and lead other people to do the same. 
the nuances of that, yep, they may be different. Yep, yep, you have one job. It's to glorify God and lead others to do the same. And, and here's how we do it. We do it through this ministry of reconciliation. We share the good news as ambassadors. It is your role as an ambassador to represent the king of kings to those who need to know who he is until we come to, to come in alignment with him. Here it is. Let me give you some technical stuff today, and, and, and I'm going to get out of your way, but I want you to see this. An ambassador, give me the definition of an ambassador. Ambassador. An ambassador, by definition, is an official envoy. It's an official envoy. What does that mean? An envoy is people who have been sent. An envoy are people who have been sent. An ambassador is an official who's been sent. Sent by who? Watch. Especially a diplomatic agent of the highest rank accredited to a foreign government or sovereign as the resident representative of his or her own government or sovereign or appointed for a special and often temporary diplomatic assignment. Okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to break this definition down. This is literally the Webster's definition of an ambassador, but it is so biblically accurate, I need to show you this. An ambassador is an official envoy. You need to understand that when God saved you by his blood, you became official. There is nothing casual about your relationship with God. There is nothing casual about your assignment. There is nothing casual about what it is that God wants to do through you and in you. It is official. You are not waiting on some oath to take. You are not waiting. Once you have faith in Jesus Christ and you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you became an official one sent. You don't have to have a seminary degree. You don't have to have the depth of knowledge that some scholar or theologian has. You have been sent by God. You are an official of the kingdom of God. But notice that he says, especially a diplomatic agent of the highest rank. <laughs> I love this part because he says, he says, an ambassador is different from every other diplomat. That there are diplomats who go to different countries on different levels. They go as representatives on different levels. But an ambassador, watch this, is a diplomat on the of the highest rank. Uh, uh, if you go throughout the Bible, there are certain things that happen in the word of God that show off God's godness. There are certain things that happen in the word of God that show off God's godness. That means that when the winds get out of control and the storms come and Jesus speaks to nature, it shows off his godness. That means the wind is a diplomat. You missed it. The waves are diplomats. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8 that when he speaks, he tells the waves where to go and where not to go. They are representatives of his power. The birds are diplomats. The stars are diplomats. The sun is a diplomat. They all represent the king on some level. But you, my friend, are an ambassador. Because you are a representative, a diplomat of the highest rank. God has ranked you above every other part of creation. You are special in God's order of creation. You are unique in God's order of creation. I don't have to go back and tell you that he gave you his breath, that he gave you his blood. I'm telling you, you are special in God's rank. Now Paul says, not only do you have his breath, not only do you have his blood, you have his assignment. You are an ambassador. You have the rank and the role, and you are to be accredited, to a foreign government. The Bible says this about the devil, that he is the prince of the powers of the air, that he is a governmental person. He, 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 has, he has governmental reign as a foreign government or a sovereign, as the resident representative. You are the resident representative, which means you live in the earth, but you're not I wish somebody would come to church every week. This stuff connects when you get it together. You are a resident representative, which means you are here, but you're not of it. Here's what happens. Watch this. That you live in the foreign country, but this place is not my home. I wish I needed, I need about three or four people to really get the fact that the earth is not my home. Texas is not my home. America is not my home. But my home, my citizenship, my loyalty is to the kingdom of God. I'm a resident representative, though. I live here, and I'm here for a, for a specific assignment. Watch this representative of his or her own government or sovereign or appointed for a special and oftentimes, watch this, temporary diplomatic assignment. A temporary diplomatic assignment. Uh, you, you do understand that we are waiting one day for this, this life to be over. <laughs> Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if in this life, 
we only have hope, then we of all people are to be pitied. Why? Because we are on a temporary assignment. That this assignment that we have, everybody goes the way that Paul talks about. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. One of the things that I know about being ambassador is that we handle death differently. We don't handle death. This is why when we have funerals in our community, we don't call them just funerals. We call them home goings. See, what you need to understand about a diplomat, you need to understand about an ambassador, is that he does not stay in foreign territory. Eventually, the president, the leader, the king, the queen calls them home. And the problem with many of us is we're so, we're so attached to the land that we've been assigned to is that we mourn at the thought of having to go home. And the Lord, the Lord told me to tell you today, and I know you're not even thinking about dying. We're talking about your assignment today. But here's what the Lord told me to tell you today. Your assignment is temporary here. Please the place which you come from and work in the place in which you've been assigned. But don't get too attached to this because there's another place in which you've been called. You're on a temporary assignment. Now, now as we look at this, 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 this assignment and we look at what God has given us, I want to show you some familiar scriptures in relation to these new definitions. Familiar scriptures in relation to these new definitions. Look at Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. This is what we call the Great Commission. Everybody hears it, but if you don't understand it in context of kingdom, you won't do it. Because you think God is telling you to knock on doors and say, have you heard the good news of Jesus Christ that he's coming back again? If you got hit by a bus today, what would happen to you? That's what you think this scripture is about. Let me share with you what it is. And Jesus came and said to him, to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me because he's king of kings. Go, therefore, watch, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Great Commission is actually a kingdom command. The Great Commission is actually a kingdom command. And here's what that kingdom command is. It's for you to be a representative of God everywhere that you go so that people will become allies with the kingdom. Don't miss it. That, that these people don't understand that all authority, the world ruler, the universal ruler of the world, the world, the universe, the solar system, whatever, the galaxy in which we live is Jesus Christ. And they are either in relationship or rebellion with him. And when you see people, you can't just regard them as, well, I don't necessarily share my faith with those type of people. I don't necessarily feel they'll try to receive it. I don't necessarily know that those are the type of folks we want at our church. Those are the type of people that we want in our, in our church. These are the type of people we want in the kingdom. No, he says, we don't regard them according to the flesh, Paul says. He says, it is our job to make allies out of every single nation. It is our job that when we go to school, we are representatives of the king. It is our job that when we go to work, we are representatives of the king. It is our job that when we live in our neighborhoods, we are representatives of the king. The great commission is a kingdom command. You are an ambassador. Everywhere you go, you are fulfilling the commission to make allies and ambassadors. This this, this This is one of the things that the church has not done a great job of. The church has done a great job of identifying our enemies. We've not done a great job of making allies. We've done a great job of identifying our enemies. This community is anti-God. This community does not understand the ways and the things and the principles of God. This community is trying to squelch our rights. It's because the ambassadors have not done their jobs. It is the ambassador's job. It is the ambassador's job to influence foreign relations between their government and the government that is here. It is the ambassador's job. If you understand from a governmental term, an ambassador of the United States goes over and it works even with hostile governments to make sure that the relations between the two countries are okay. If indeed we are called to be ambassadors and there is hostile relations between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world, it's because the ambassadors have not done our jobs. No, this is, this is not, I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know where you fall in understanding this, but I need you to get it, that God is not calling us to go out and to beat up the world, but to go out and to love them and to share with them the good news of the reconciliation, that there is a king that wants to provide resources and reconciliation and restoration to those who have been at odds with him. And the problem is, for many of us, we don't know how to go out and just love people as ambassadors. 
We, we don't understand. We don't understand the concept of just loving people as an ambassador. You have one job. The church needs to figure out how we can live and love as ambassadors to make allies with this kingdom command called the Great Commission. The second thing I want you to see is the residence of an ambassador. This is so powerful. Paul calls us ambassadors. And when we think about ambassadors, ambassadors don't live where it is that they're from. They live in a foreign land. But, but even within that foreign land, they don't just live in the foreign land. They have special places in which they dwell. Uh, before I get to, to go a little bit deeper in this, um, several years ago, uh, I was in Africa, and I was there for several days. And at the end of the trip, one of the people who I was uh, on the trip with got sick. So what happened is everybody else was going home, and I had to stay an extra five days past the trip. It was a traumatic time for my family because I was supposed to come home. I was supposed to come home on the day of my youngest daughter's birthday. We, were gonna, we had plans for her birthday. My daughters are really young at the time. It was several years ago, a few years ago. They're really young, so they don't understand. Daddy can't come home. Only thing they understand is he's at the hospital with someone, but you hear daddy, hospital, your kids are freaking out. Far away, can we go see him? Nope. So it's a very traumatic time. I'm trying to talk to my kids, let them know that I'm okay, but I just had to stay back with someone who wasn't, who wasn't feeling well. Well, the diplom I mean, the, the, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the people, the representatives of, of Uganda who, who uh, were there and assisting us, some government aides and some other people who were, who were on the ground there in which we were helping with missions, they could see that I was tense. They could see that I was stressed. They could see that things were, were, uh, were, were, were hard for me as I, was able, I wasn't able to go home. And so what they did was they said, hey, what we want to do is we want to help you. I, I was going to do the accent, but I ain't going to do the accent. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. They said, what we want to do is we, I love accents. I love doing accents. But, you know, it's offensive. Uh, be careful. Ask permission before you do accents. Uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the government officials and the people who we're on the ground with doing missions with, they said, hey, we want, we want you to feel at home. We don't, we don't want you to be as far away from home and experiencing this tension because while I was there, I was eating what they ate. I'm a missionary. When you're a missionary, you inculcate yourself into the culture of the people you are trying to reach. Man, that's parenthetic for some of you. The reason why many of us don't reach other people is because we're not willing to get into their culture. We're not willing to understand who they are. We're not willing to understand how they think, what they eat, what they're listening to, how they're dressing, what it is that, they, what it is that their history is. We don't do it. So while I was a missionary, I was doing everything as they did it. Why? Because I've become all things to all men so that by all means I might win some for Christ. That is our job as ambassadors. But in this moment, here's what they said. They said, we want to make you feel comfortable. Your mission is over. So here's what they told us. They said, hey, let's go get some burgers. <laughs> so they take me to this restaurant. They take me to this restaurant. We sit down, and it's like super Americanized. Like, it's amazing. Like, you go through the streets, and everything is super African. Everything is like you are in a foreign country. And they take me downtown to this restaurant, this section of downtown uh, in Kampala in Uganda. And it's like super Americanized. I mean, I go in there, and it's like cats dressed like French, and they got glasses, like young professionals. I'm like, where has been my whole time? I've been here this whole time. <laughs> These are my people. They look like my cousins, right? I'm like, yo, what's up? And so they take me in here, and, and I'm eating burgers and all of this stuff. And, and I mean, I'm having a great time in this particular uh, restaurant. I'm eating burgers and fries. The burgers were even better than the burgers back home because they're not GMO. <laughs> I mean, these are real cows raised by real people with real grass. I mean, I'm like smashing the hamburgers and fries. I'm like eating pizza. I'm like, I'm like I mean, they, they really kind of messed me up. Like, I was actually doing real good on my health journey while I was there. And then they just messed me up with all the American food at the end. But, but we're there, and, and they're trying to make me, here's the thing. They said, we want to make you feel like you're at home. They, they said, while you're here, we want to make you feel like you're at home. The problem is, during the day, I could escape as much as I could eating all this food and talking the language and seeing people using internet and the internet cafes and all this stuff like that. But when I went back to the hotel, the hotel didn't feel like home at all. Everywhere, every time I would lay down my head, I was reminded that I was thousands of miles away from home. Every time I would lay down my head, I would turn on the TV maybe to put me to sleep. The news told me I was thousands of miles away from home. When I tried to call my kids, but they were at school because uh, the time difference was different, I was reminded I was thousands of Away, thousands of miles away from home. I wish there was just a group of people that I could have got with. Because see, when, I, when everybody else left the mission trip, the person that I was, I was staying with was in the hospital. I was by myself at this point. Wow. I was all alone. And, and I was always reminded during this part of the trip that I was thousands of miles away from home. But while the other people who were on the mission were with me, it didn't matter. Because I had a taste of home within this residence with all of them. 
I had a taste of home within this residence with all of them. When we all came back from the mission, we would come back to the hotel. The news was still messed up. The news still didn't tell me anything about my country. The news still reminded me that I was tens of thousands of miles away. But here's what happened. When we all got together, it felt like home because we were together. I don't think you understand, if you don't understand foreign policy, that, that ambassadors live in embassies. And ambassadors live in embassies. What, what is an embassy? Put the definition of embassy up. An embassy is a body of persons entrusted with a mission. An embassy is a body of persons entrusted with a mission to a sovereign or government, especially an ambassador and his or his staff, his or her staff. Stop. Let's read again. An embassy is a body of persons. The Bible told me in 1 Corinthians that we are the body of Christ. The Bible says that we are a body of persons entrusted with a mission. And here at Freedom, this embassy, our mission is to see people saved, set free, strengthened, sent, and serving for success in the... <laughs> because we are, we are a mission to a sovereign or a government. The mission is not to grow this church. The mission is to advance the kingdom. The mission is not to be a better, more popular uh, place on Instagram. The mission is to grow the kingdom. The mission is to advance the kingdom. Why? Because we are ambassadors. This, this sounds like major goal number two, to become a body of people with a mission or to establish a pathway for purpose. Everything that we do here is intentional about advancing the kingdom of God. We're in the middle of planning strategically for the next three years of our church. And one of the things that we want you to do is become involved with what we're doing so that we can establish a pathway for purpose so that this place is not just a church. This place is not just a building. This place is not just some, some place in the community that if it closed down, nobody would care. That this place is an embassy. That when you feel lonely during the week and you're thinking to yourself, the news is saying, I'm thousands of miles away from home. My job is reminding me I'm thousands of miles away from home. When life is tough and it's reminding you that you're thousands of miles away from home, you can come to the embassy with a body of believers who are on the same mission and say, I may be far away from home, but this taste of the kingdom is what I needed to get me through and back on track for my mission. Stop missing out on coming to the embassy. Embassy, embassy is the official headquarters of an ambassador. Watch this. It is dangerous for an ambassador to dwell in the country without an embassy. It is dangerous for an ambassador to dwell in the country without an embassy. You know why? Because there are borders around the embassy that make the embassy the territory of the kingdom and not that country. Yeah. There are borders around the embassy that the foreigners know I can't go on that ground. If I go on that ground, I'm liable to get shot. If I go on that ground, I'm a terrorist. If I go on that ground without permission, there's a government that reigns supreme over that place that is not... It's in this country, but it's not of this country. And everybody can't just come to the embassy. Everybody can't just walk into the embassy. You're protected in the embassy. You're resourced in the embassy. You're, 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 you're trained in the embassy. You have communication with home in the embassy. The problem with most of us is that we're trying to live in the country without ever coming to the embassy. I've been listening to people for years now, and I've been placating to it, talk about, well, it's not about your church attendance. Then why did God tell us not to forsake ourselves of assembling together? I'm not saying your church attendance saves you, but your lack of church attendance can, can lead you to destruction. I'm not saying that you're a heathen because you don't come every single Sunday, but when you don't come to the embassy, what you literally do is you roam the streets in a foreign land without the protection and communication of the home country. You roam the streets of a foreign land without the protection and the communication of a foreign country. God has created the embassy as a place where we get together and remind ourselves of the mission. He also puts us together in a place that tells us, watch this, that, that, that we can make it and we get communication from heaven. Matthew 16, Matthew 16, 18 and 19 says this, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock 
I'll build, somebody say embassy. I'll build my embassy. Watch. He says, Peter, Peter, you made a confession. And in this moment, I'm going to build something within. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He already had the kingdom. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. If you were here for the last couple of weeks, you know that Jesus came proclaiming the kingdom. So the kingdom was already there. Why does he need to build a church in the middle of the kingdom? <laughs> it's because you keep missing this text. Watch. He says, and I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my embassy. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. See, there's a world out there that wants to destroy it. But because it's bordered as kingdom territory... The gates of hell can't infringe upon it. The gates of hell can't take it down. The gates of hell can't come up against it. And when you go out there, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. When you go out there, you take the kingdom with you. Here's what he says. I will give you the keys. You've been reading this text your whole life. You've been reading this text your whole life. And you never knew. Then he says, hey, hey, I'm going to build a church which is an embassy, a place that you come with consistently so that you can have communication about kingdom orders. The embassy is where you get orders for what you are supposed to do for the kingdom. And he says, I'm going to build my church on your confession. I'm going to build my church on your worship. I'm going to build my church on your understanding of the word. How do I get all of that from that? He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. The Bible says that he is the word incarnate. The Bible says that, that calling him the Christ is to call him the Messiah, God. That's worship. He says, and it's revelation, it's faith, it's understanding. He says, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. It is the kingdom. The embassy is the place where we come to worship, where we come to get information about the word, and we get revelation about what we are to do with the word. He makes a confession about it. He gets all of that. Watch. And then God says, yep, as a result, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. He says, you came to the embassy. That's where you got the keys. You're trying to live in kingdom without the embassy. You don't get the keys until you come here. And the fact that there are multiple keys means you got to keep coming back. Did y'all miss what I just said? Because you came and got a key, and it helps you with a part of your life. But the enemy knows that there are different things that are going to come up against you. you got to keep coming back to the embassy so that when God gives you new keys, you can use those keys in your life. What key are you applying from the embassy? I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You missed it. Whatever you bind in the foreign country, I'll honor it in home country. And whatever you loose in the foreign country, it'll be honored in the home country. Why is this important? Because the home country is where the resources are. And if you get around and you start doing certain stuff because you have authority, I'm going to talk about that in a second, because you have authority, but you're not communicating with the embassy, the embassy has no clue of what you're doing. And so there is no backing and there is no resource for what it is that you're claiming. Here it is. You've been reading these scriptures all your life, and God is telling you, I need you to apply them differently. I'm just teaching today. Just, just intro to the kingdom. That's really what this series should have been called, not invasion. It should have been intro to the kingdom. We haven't even got to the invasion yet, really. Last thing I want you to see before we, I take my seat and go home is the rights of an ambassador. I'm not going home. I'm going to another service. Y'all going home. The role of an ambassador, that's that preacher talk, before I take my seat and go home. <laughs> the role of an ambassador is number one. The residence of an ambassador, you ought to be connected to the embassy. And then last but not least is the rights of an ambassador. This is the best part. This is the part that revolutionized my life about seven or eight years ago. It transformed my life, and it changed me forever as it relates to my faith in God and my understanding of myself as being a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, the rights of an ambassador. The ambassador lives in foreign territory. They have the, the embassy as the place in which they, they, they are safe because of the borders and the, and the gates and the things that are protected. And nothing can come in without the permission of the home country. Nothing can come in without the security of the home country. Several of y'all should be thanking God for the embassy because there are some things that the devil's been trying to send into your life, but because you're connected to the embassy... And I'm believing God because we're teaching on this, God's going to manifest it differently. Now that we're teaching on the fact that this is the embassy, those who are committed to the embassy are going to see greater protection in their lives. Those who are committed to the embassy are going to see greater resources in their lives. Those who are committed to the embassy are going to hear from home country a little bit better. Why? Because God has ordained it this way. We are ambassadors. 
Watch. But here's what he says. He says, but you got rights too. You don't have to just lock yourself up in a church building and say this is the only protection I have. You can roam around the country and still have your rights. You can roam around the country and still have your authority. You can still roam around the country because your assignment is not done in the embassy. <laughs> Communication, training, information happens in the embassy. Your assignment happens in country. We, we host people at the embassy. There are people who are foreign diplomats or foreign people who you want to bring into the embassy because you want them to be treated well so they can get a good meal. I was reading this about ambassadors. They say ambassadors host meals for foreigners all the time. They bring them into the embassy, and when they welcome them into the embassy, it's like welcoming them into the home country. And they, they prepare a meal for them, and they treat them with hospitality, and they do this. This is why we set up the way we set up, because when you bring somebody into Freedom Church, you are bringing them in the embassy. It's like bringing them into the home country. This is their opportunity to experience the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is the invasion. And when they come and you host them and you prepare, and we prepare a good meal for them to eat and to understand that this is what God has for them, here's what, here's what literally happens. They become allies of home country. They, they become allies of home countries. In war-torn countries, they want to become citizens of home country. The embassy will host people, watch this, who are refugees of that country, and they will begin to send them back with the opportunity to become citizens of a country that has greater rights. You do understand that we are ambassadors in a war-torn zone. We are ambassadors in a place where there are some who are prisoners of war, that we are called to negotiate with foreign terrorists, that we are called to, to negotiate with, with these foreign people to get our prisoners of war back, and then others who are called, who have been terrorists, to turn away and run to our country for refuge. But you've got rights in your assignment. When you leave here, you have rights in your assignment. It's called diplomatic immunity. It's called diplomatic immunity. Here's the definition of diplomatic immunity. It's a principle of international law, watch this, that limits the degree to which foreign government and international organization officials and employees are subject to the authority of police officers and judges in their country of assignment. Y'all missing this, man. I guess, I guess, I guess I'm going to work on this. Y'all going to have to listen to this again this week so you can really get it. You have, as an ambassador, diplomatic immunity which means the laws of this country outside of this embassy are limited against you. That the laws of the, I'm not telling you to be lawless. Romans 13 tells you to obey the laws of the land you're in. There are many instances, Google it, of diplomatic immunity abuse. There are people who abuse diplomatic immunity. They will claim diplomatic immunity when they've done something clearly illegal in the country in which they are. But what they're doing is they're breaching relationships. They can claim diplomatic immunity, but what they're doing is they're breaching relationship between their country and the country in which they're assigned. It is not your job to go out of here and begin breaking laws that breach relationship between the kingdom of heaven and the people we're trying to reach. Do you understand what I'm saying? Here's what we're to do. We're to follow the laws of the land until they violate the laws of the kingdom. We are, to, we, are, we, are, we are to follow the laws of the land until they violate the laws of the kingdom. And when they violate the laws of the kingdom, you stand tall like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Joseph, all of the people who we've seen kingdom-wise in the Old Testament and the New who stood up for the kingdom of God and miracles happened. I'm reminded of Peter locked in a jail cell because he refused to stop talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the people in the embassy went back and they prayed. They petitioned the home country. They said to the home country, home country, Peter got locked up because he did what you asked. Home country said, really? Are you serious? They said, yes. And they kept petitioning the home country. They kept sending emails. They kept sending texts. They kept sending Instagram messages. They kept sending Facebook messages. They kept sending phone calls. They kept sending video chats. They kept sending stuff back to the home country. What are we going to do, home country? What are we going to do, home country? Home country sent in a Navy SEAL, an angel that goes in and unlocks the doors and lets Peter free and walks him back to the embassy and says, I've delivered him to you. You better go and read your Bible. Peter was rescued by the home country because the people of the embassy petitioned when he stood up for the laws of the kingdom over the laws of the land. God says the laws of the land are limited against you when you're following the laws of the kingdom. Here's the reason why some of this foolish teaching that we teach don't work. 
You can lay hands on a Bentley and you can get it with your bad credit score. No, because by the time you got a bad credit score, you've already violated the laws of the kingdom. You've already violated the laws of the kingdom. Yes, the laws of the, of the land say that your credit score has to be a certain way. But watch this. This is how God operates, that you start to practice good stewardship in your heart. You start to practice good stewardship with your hands. You start to practice good stewardship by honoring God and placing him first. He'll supersede the credit score when your heart supersedes the law of the land. Don't you tell me that you're going to violate all the laws of the land. You're going to violate the laws of the kingdom. And God is obligated now to, over, to override the laws. He can, but he won't. Come on. Come on. But here's what I need you to understand as well. That when people tell you that you can't speak up for the kingdom of God, that you can't preach what this Bible preaches, that you can't say what the Bible tells you to say in truth and in love. Notice this. Love, does not, love is no, of no effect when it is not combined with truth. Love is of no effect when it's not combined with truth. Stop letting people tell you that the church is just supposed to speak in love. We're supposed to speak the truth in love. And don't let people tell you that our truth is not their truth and that the Bible has a truth that is outdated. You got diplomatic immunity. I don't care what the people of the world say. I don't care what the culture says. I don't care what people try to tell you around. You've got diplomatic immunity. Your government has sent you on assignment and your government will protect you through every bit of what it is that you've been assigned to. Speak the truth in love. You've got diplomatic immunity. I'm, I'm done. Galatians chapter 5 teaches us what, what, what the laws of the world look like versus the laws of the kingdom. It says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You're not under the law of the earth. The law that was given was laws of the earth. They were, they were physical and practical principles that, that govern the earth. But if you're led by the Spirit, you have a law that supersedes that law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Here's where you're living. Here's where you got to start subjecting yourself to the laws of the land when you're living out these things. Sexual morality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, manipulation, right? Manipulation and sorcery. Because some of y'all think you got to be on the Ouija board to be doing sorcery. Some of y'all just manipulative. And that's witchcraft within itself. Idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger. My God, help me, Jesus. I ain't going to never tell y'all something that I'm not convicted by. That's one of mine right there. Rival, uh, rivalries. Dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. If you ain't on there, you know who you are. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things don't have the backing of the home country. It's not that you can't be saved, but there is a level of receipt and resource that comes from the home country that when we're living outside of violation, this is just the Bible. People are like, oh, you can't preach this no more. I'm teaching it because I want y'all to experience everything heaven has to offer you. Next, next verse says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. This is how you ought to be living. Love, joy, peace. Pa Listen, watch. This fruit is coming out of you. This fruit is coming out of you. Stop looking for where it's coming to you. As an ambassador... This is coming out of you to other people. So here's, I want to read it again. But the fruit of the Spirit, the way an ambassador is to provide representation of their home country is by loving, being joyful, providing peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. God help me again. Self-control. God help me again. Watch what he says. Against such things. There is no law, said in Robert White way. When you live according to the Spirit, you live in diplomatic immunity. No law can contain you. No law can hold you back. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Here's what I want to remind you of, and I'm done. There was a time when you were a foreigner of the kingdom. But you had to crucify, go back, put that, put that last verse back up, I'm sorry y'all. There was a time where you had to crucify what it was that you had citizenship, your citizenship. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. That was your old citizenship. 
you had to say, I'm no longer a citizen. I denounce my citizenship in the old country. And I pick up my citizenship in a new country. Everything that was good about the old country, it still exists. But I have crucified my passions and desires for it. I'm an ambassador, a representation, a representative of the kingdom. I've got diplomatic immunity. And because I, I live out the fruit of the spirit, there is no law that can contain me. There are desires that God will give me that go beyond my wildest dreams. There are certain things that God is calling me to that I could never have imagined before. It's because I live in diplomatic community. The problem is we want to live with one foot as a citizen of the world and one foot as a citizen of the kingdom. Here's what God is saying. You can be in the world and a full citizen of the kingdom, but you got to make sure that you're being governed by the laws of your home country. Stop admiring so much what's happening. You can even enjoy the benefits of the home country. You can eat the food of the home country. You can experience the culture of the home country. You can do all of that as long as it does not interfere with the mission of your home country. I know I've used this one long, big analogy of government. I hope I did not lose you, but I'm trying to get you to understand something. God wants you to enjoy the life that you're here. You, you live here on earth. But here's what he's saying. Don't let it supersede what I've called you to do in heaven. As we go and we take territory for the kingdom of heaven, I want you to be reminded that you are an ambassador. Ambassadors do this through love and peace and joy, faithfulness, kindness, goodness, gentleness, long-suffering. All of those things that we've mentioned in the fruit of the Spirit, that's how an ambassador works. That's what God is calling you to. Stand on your feet. Maybe you're in here right now and you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't even know if I've made the commitment to denounce my citizenship. Here's your opportunity. Listen, people who, people who change their citizenship, when I watch them on the news, Lucas, they celebrate like crazy their new citizenship. They're not embarrassed. They're not when they say, raise your hand and take the oath. They don't halfway hold it up and be like, I hope nobody's watching. No, it's cameras there. They take an oath. They raise it. They want every ICE officer in all of the world to know, I'm a citizen. Y'all miss that. There are some people, when it comes to the kingdom of God, we're so ashamed of lifting our hand and say, I want to be a citizen. This is why the devil keeps attacking you. He don't know what your confession is. When that ICE officer saw that he had his hand up and he took that oath and he became a citizen, he's like, I got to leave him alone. They keep coming after you because you're not in the embassy. They keep coming after you because you're not a citizen. Today, I got two challenges for everybody that's in this room. One. If you're already a believer, if you're already a citizen, if you're already an ambassador, it's your role. I'm not asking you if you're applying. It's what you've been called to. Here's my question. How long will you forsake your residence? I'm challenging you because I believe that in this next season, God is going to take us to another level as a church. And the people connected to the embassy are going to get the resources, the, the protection, the provision, and the communication of the home country. And I'm not saying you can't get it from your house, but don't try to tell me you can do it without the embassy. That's not, that's not how this works. So there's some of us who got to step up our, our level of commitment to the embassy. Then there's others of us who just need to become citizens right now. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to be honest. I need you to be honest. The cameras of heaven are watching. The ICE, ag the ICE agents of hell are watching. But here's what I need to ask you. First question. If you're a part of the first group and you're saying, I need to be more committed to the embassy. I don't necessarily know what that means, but I'm ready to be more committed to the embassy. I'm ready. I'm ready to begin to serve. I'm ready to begin to do what God has called me to do. I'm ready to begin to bring people from the foreign nation into the embassy to be a host of this new, of this world that I live in. If that's you, raise your hand. Committed. I want to be more committed to the embassy. I want to be more committed to the embassy. I see those hands. Come on, I want to see those hands. This is not a call for salvation. This is a call for the people who say, you know what, God? I can't forsake my attendance in the church. I can't say, forsake my assignment in the church. God, I'm here. I'm giving more to the embassy. I see those hands. God bless you. Put those down. Now, here's the next group. Here's the next group. Those of you who want to be citizens of the kingdom. You're saying, I want to be a citizen of the kingdom. I, I, I want to change my citizenship. Today, I'm raising my hand and saying, I'm giving my pledge to Jesus. I want to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. I'll live on earth as an ambassador, but I want to be a citizen of heaven. If that's you today, raise your hand high and let's see it. Come on, raise your hand high. I see it. God bless you. Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. I want to be a citizen of the kingdom of God. Amen. Listen, let me pray for us all as we get ready to leave this place. God, we love you and we thank you. We honor you. We give you praise and glory because of who you are and how you are working in our lives. God, we pray that this analogy would not be lost on us. 
God, that you would transfer, God, this, this, this concept of us being ambassadors into our lives, into our hearts, into our minds, that we would never read the scripture again, that we would never engage a neighbor the same again, that we would not go to the grocery store the same way again, God, that we are representatives of our home country, that as we step down with our feet, we will be surrounded, God, with the protection, the resources, and the communication of the embassy. God, I pray that as this embassy grows, God, that you will begin to send resources to us so that we can do what you've called us to do in this war-torn country that we live in. We love you, we honor you, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, I told you that when I was young, they made us do a pledge for the royal ambassadors. They made us do a pledge for the royal ambassadors. I don't want everybody to do this. Usually I do the blessing. I say, if you believe I say receive it, and that gets real traditional for some of you. But here's what I want you to do today. If you, you've heard what I've said, and it makes an inkling of sense to you, and you want to accept the responsibility of being an ambassador, I want you to raise your hand. I want to be an ambassador. Matter of fact, if, if you, if, 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 it's too late, your eyes are open. So I'll tell you to close your eyes again. The reason why I have you close your eyes, I hope you know this, because some people, some people, they, they, it's not so much for the people who are ashamed to raise their hand with their eyes are open, it's for those of you who raise your hand because people's eyes are open. It's, it's not so much for the people, and I'll just take a couple seconds just so I just need to teach, man, because I, I, I got to set culture in the embassy. The reason why I have you close your eyes is because I need you to raise your hand not knowing that anybody's looking so you don't impress nobody. More hands go up when I tell you to raise your hands when the eyes are open than when the eyes are closed. I, I hope y'all know that. Like, I'll give you the same challenge twice, and more hands will go up. So here's the thing. If you're ready, if you're willing to be, and, 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 and say, listen, if you don't want to be an ambassador, don't you lie in front of heaven. God knows your heart. If you want to be an ambassador, if you, want to, if you say, listen, God, I want to take on the role and responsibility of an ambassador, raise your hand high in the air. Raise your hand high in the air. Raise your hand high in the air. And today, here's what I'm challenging you to. God, Lord, help me not to sound like the bitter old man here. I just, I just feel like I'm fussing a little bit today. I don't want to do that. But I, I, I want more for you than I think you want for yourself sometimes. And I, I don't know if you understand it from this platform. I, I got to just talk. Grace, keep your hand up. Don't, don't put it down. I just need you to understand that sometimes I feel from this platform like I want more for you than what you're ready to receive. And it, it hurts because I understand. I, I, when I'm praying, I see what the enemy has planned for you. I see how the enemy wants to destroy your family. I see how he wants to destroy your mind. I see how he wants to destroy our nation. I see how he wants to destroy our, our witness in the kingdom of God. And when I put these challenges forth and we take it as casual, I see how, how the enemy looks and he laughs and he says, they don't get it. I don't want to sound like that old grumpy old man, but I do want to, I do want to emphasize the strength of what it is that God is trying to do on you today. Everybody with their hand up, everybody wants to be an ambassador. Say, God, I accept my role and responsibility as an ambassador for Christ. God, I accept my place in the house of the embassy of God. God, I accept all of the rights and privileges that come alongside of being an ambassador. God, as I go out, give me diplomatic immunity as I fulfill the role and the purpose that you have given to me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Come on, give God some praise.